Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Special welcome to our visitors today. We're glad to have you here to share in our hour of worship. You know, during the week we get busy with a lot of things. We need to gather together around the Word and be reminded just how great our God is. And you'll see that uh, contrast between our human weakness and God's greatness in both the readings and certainly also in the messages today. And may it renew your trust and your confidence in the Lord as he says, live, live in uh, trusting me and, and move forward. We have two lessons from scripture, sandwiched between them is our response, which is Psalm 73. The first lesson is the basis for the sermon. It's from Exodus 14, reading as follows. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there was no, were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, you need only be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to the divide the waters so that the Israelites can go through the seas on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Through the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, 
And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the honor of the reading of the Holy Gospel lesson. This lesson is recorded in the 14th chapter of Matthew's account. It begins at the 22nd verse. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, that would have been between three and six in the morning, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you in the water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said, why did you doubt? When they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel lesson of our Lord. Grace and mercy and the Spirit's counsel as we consider the words from Exodus 14 that were read to you earlier, the account of the crossing of the Red Sea by the Israelites. Move on. Like, you know, get going. Do something. But how? Where? This fledgling Israelite nation was in a dilemma. Fledgling because it had just come into existence days before, beginning with the night of the 10th plague they're in Egypt. You may recall the, the Israelites had been in Egypt for over 400 years, most of those years serving as slaves to the Egyptian government. But now, by the will of God, through even the stubbornness of the unbelieving Egyptian pharaoh, the king, they had been ejected forcefully, you might say, from the nation of Israel, and they began to travel eastward from the northern part of Egypt toward the land of Canaan and Palestine. And they were out in the desert. They were, however, led, to, led by the Lord to a spot in the desert where they had a body of water, the Red Sea, on the east to the south and to the west there were mountains. And now the, the Egyptians, having recovered their senses, so to speak, the Egyptian pharaoh sent an armored column of 600 of his best chariots plus cavalry and infantry to chase after the Israelites to punish them and to bring them back. The, the Israelites were boxed in. They were trapped, 
move on, get going? Like where? Like how? Well, that was a time to trust the Lord. And they had every good reason to trust the Lord. Because their nation had been formed, as I said, in the night of the 10th plague. The 10th plague. That was the plague in which the Lord would bring glory and punishment at the same time on the Egyptians for their unbelief. He would send the angel of death who would pass through the land of Egypt and take the life of every firstborn human and animal. But he would pass over the lives, the houses of the believing Israelites who had in faith followed the Lord's command and offered into death sacrificed an innocent lamb and painted its blood on the doorposts and the lintels of their houses, prefiguring, of course, what our Lord Christ would do on the cross on Good Friday as he gave his blood to cover over the sins of his people to provide that the angel of death would pass over us too for all eternity. Some foreigners who had come to believe in the Lord as their God, plus livestock, wagon loads of baggage, there they were, out in the desert, following the Lord's lead. But when they saw that Egyptian army closing in on them, they were terrified. Wouldn't you be too? You found yourself boxed in in situations in light, in glowing faith. They turned rather in sarcasm and disdain. We heard them saying to Moses, What's the matter, Moses? Were all the cemeteries in Egypt so full that you couldn't bury us all there? You brought us out here in the desert to make a new cemetery just for us? Is that what this is all about? We never should have listened to you in the first place. We should have stayed back there and served the Egyptians. It's sure better to be a living slave than a dead corpse. So much for a glowing faith. Their faith, when pressed by many a foe, shrank. But you see the Lord's grace. In his grace, he did not bring punishment on them. In his grace, he had Moses encourage them. Moses said to them, do not be afraid. Stand still and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring to you this day. These Egyptians that you see coming after you, they will not be seen again by you. Just, you won't have to lift a finger. Moses had every reason to be so confident because he had been the Lord's instrument in all the ten plagues. The ten plagues, as you recall, were all intended in one, for, for, for one key purpose, to show the superiority of the Lord the God of the Israelites, over against the gods, the idols of the Egyptians. For example, the Egyptians worshipped the Nile River. Every spring it would flood and it would bring moisture and fertility to their fields. When it would recede, they'd plant the crops and they'd have their crops for the year. So they worshipped the river. But at the Lord's command through Moses, that river for a time turned to blood. They worshipped the sun. Ah, oh, yes, the sun. But for at Moses' command, following the Lord's direction, for three days that sun did not shine in all of Egypt. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. But Pharaoh persistently refused to accept it. Moses, on the other hand, saw this. He witnessed it. He experienced it. the Lord is God. He's the living God who cares for and rescues his people. So he said to the people, stand firm. Don't be afraid. The Lord is on your side. Then he began to pray for the people. But the Lord said to him, Moses, time for prayer is done. Tell the people to move on. Tell the people to move on? Yes, Moses. And then he said, here's how. Take your staff in your right hand and hold it out to the east over that body of water. And you will see the deliverance of the Lord. And in the process, 
the Lord, in response to Moses' obedience to his command, the obedience of faith, the waters began to part. The Lord formed a corridor through that body of water. Wall of water to the left and to the right, and the seabed blown dry by a strong east wind. You know, people today aren't as biblically literate as they used to be a generation ago, but even those who know very little of the Old Testament usually know this story. Why? Because it is such a stupendous event. It was an event that anyone who experienced it would never, ever forget for the rest of, of their lives. It was an event that struck terror into the hearts of those inhabitants of Jericho. Forty years later, this nation came to the walls of Jericho, and the, spy, and the Jerichoites locked themselves up in fear because they realized that the God of these people is the God who had led them through the sea in a miraculous way. The Lord God then guided the path. Would you walk through a body of water with walls of water on either side and dry ground that was wet <laughs> and body of water just 12 hours before? Would you? It took faith. And they responded with the courage that comes of trust that God knows what he's doing. They were aided in that courage by the angel of the Lord. You'll notice that when you reread this section of scripture. We often read about angels, plural, or an angel doing something, a messenger of God. But from time to time, at critical moments in God's plan of salvation, to move his plan forward, that is to use this Israelite nation, the descendants of Abraham, to bring the Savior into the world, at critical times in this plan, the angel, definite article, the, appears and does something that really helps the situation. The angel of the Lord is none other than the second person of the Trinity in a, in a manifestation um, to the people. It is the pre-incarnate Christ. It is Christ. And he appeared in this cloud, a cloud that normally led the people. In this case, that cloud moved behind the people. So it was between the people of Israel and the, and the pursuing Egyptian army. And on the one side, this cloud miraculously shone light so that they could cross through the sea in the middle of the night with light. And on the other side, it was darkness so that the Egyptians didn't know where to go and they couldn't pursue through it. It was safety, it was deliverance, it was guidance. This was Christ leading his people. They crossed through. And the rest of the story you know. The people got through safely. The Egyptians pursued in their hard unbelief. And the Lord said, I will bring me glory. I will prove that I am superior to the gods of the Egyptians. And I am stronger than any forces that unbelievers can bring against me. And then at, at his direction, Moses held his staff again over that body of water. The water came together and not one of those brave soldiers survived. Stupendous doesn't even begin to describe what happened that night and that day. The Lord delivered his people. He said, tell the people to move on. They did. And he blessed them. He blessed their obedience of faith. This account uh, is a key account in all of the Old Testament, isn't it? It demonstrates the formation of the new nation of Israel. It was the beginning of its departure from Egypt to the land of promise, from slavery into freedom, from not being a people to being a nation, the people of God. It demonstrates the power of God even over nature. 
But it has two more important key thrusts. One is it again was done to demonstrate the superiority of the Lord, the God of the Bible, over any other so-called God that is idle. It showed that his superiority so that he would receive where he said, now what do I do? Now where do I go? Now which way do I turn? They turned to the Lord, and they turned to Moses, their leader, but not the glory, not man. That is still true today. There are so-called scientists and scholars who strive to figure out just what ways, what forces of nature might have actually occurred so that this, what became a mythical story of the Old Testament times, um, could actually have occurred naturally. Please. This was a historic account. This was an event because with God nothing is impossible. And to try to make it something less than what it was is to mock and, yes, blaspheme the Lord our God. In our hearts we know what happened that day. And we marvel at the power of God and what he will go through to deliver his people from their dilemmas, from their crises, from their troubles. So whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, let us give glory to God, who by his power and by his grace sustains our lives. The other part of this account is again to show that he wants us to live our lives trusting him, even in the bad times. That we would pray as we sang, Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by many a foe, that will not tremble on the brink of poverty or woe. There will come days, if they haven't come already, in the lives of each of us, you and me, in which we will face real dilemmas. We will be boxed in. We will be trapped, we feel, by the situation. We will say, what do we do? How do we get out of this? Which direction? What's, what's, what's in it for us? How, how can we get out of this? How will we get through this? Like the people of Israel, we can stand back at a distance and see what happens to the Egyptians and to the others and say, oh, they should have trusted God. But like the people of Israel who hear and say, well, this is happening to me now, well, it's a real test of one's faith. He would have us look at accounts like this and others and realize that with God nothing is impossible that we should hear the encouragement of Moses, who looked back at all that God had done to demonstrate his love and his power and say, I will trust my God, even though I don't see how he's going to get me through this, I know some way he will. And so he wants us to build up our faith because as we face those problems, he will see us through them. That kind of faith, that kind of confidence of faith is what he's looking for. And remember the angel of God. It was his presence to the camped Israelite nation that gave them the courage to cross through the Red Sea. The walls of water on either side did not scare them. It did not at least prevent them from acting according to what God had commanded. And in the same way, as we trust God and follow his way, personally, he will lead us through those crises of life. There's also a word here for the New Testament, Israel of God, the Holy Christian Church. We who are heirs of that great love and, and focused attention and grace of God, he says to the church, Move on, move forward, do your mission. And so easily it is for the church, whether it is a congregation like St. Mark or a synod like the Wells, he says, we say, 
But how? But where? We don't have the money. We don't know the reason. People are against us. We can't decide. There, there are all kinds of aces. Stop looking at yourselves. Keep looking at me. He, the angel of God, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary as we confessed. He did live and die and rise again. He does have the power. He has earned the victory. He is the Savior and our God who will lead us to the promised land too. He says simply focus on me, on my word and sacraments and move forward. And in the moving forward you will fulfill the mission I have for you. Do you like the account of the Red Sea crossing? It is an account that reminds us, give glory to God. May it spur you on to give greater glory to God in all things in your life. But may it also build up your confidence that the God who can do all things, do this thing too, is your God. And he will see you and he will see us through any and all trials that we face until he brings us to his promised land of heaven. Amen. And the peace of God which passes our understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hear our prayers, Lord, even as we join to pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace.